Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with the Horrible Hand Ham and Cheese Board. That's right. Not only would this be ideal for Halloween, but if a friend of yours calls you up and they're having a party and they're looking for some help with the food and they ask you if you can give them a hand, this would be perfect. Oh yeah, edible puns are the best puns. And to get started, the first thing we'll do is mix up our cheese spread, which we'll start with some room temperature cream cheese, to which we will add some salt, some freshly ground black pepper, plus a little bit of granulated garlic. And then of course, we'll also sneak in a few shakes of cayenne. And then I'm gonna finish up this relatively simple spread with some freshly chopped Italian parsley, followed by some finely chopped roasted red peppers, which of course you could fire roast yourself, which we've done many times, or like I did in this case, we'll just use something nice out of a jar. And that's it, once everything's in there, we'll give this a mix. And if your cheese was actually at room temp, like this was supposed to be, this will mix together much faster, and you won't have to wrestle with it like I did. But anyway, once we eventually get that mixed, we'll go ahead and clean off the spoon, as well as clean up the sides of the bowl a little bit. Since what we want to do next is wrap this and pop it in the fridge so it's nice and cold when we go to use it. And then what we'll do once our cheese spread is chilling in the fridge is move on to the drawing of our hand. Although we're not going to draw it, okay, I have no drawing skills, but I do have world-class tracing skills. So we'll place our hand on a piece of parchment or wax paper, and we'll take a pencil and trace all the way around. Oh, and pro tip, we will want to angle the tip of the pencil a little bit under the finger and arm. Okay, if you hold it straight up and down, you're not going to get an accurate size, and you'll end up with fingers looking fatter than they really are. So by angling that tip under a little bit, you'll get a more accurate template. And that's it once our hand's been drawn. Sorry, I mean traced. We will transfer that onto a sheet pan, but we should probably flip it over so we're not placing our food on those lead pencil marks. But anyway, suit yourself. And that's it. Now that we can see where that cheese is supposed to go, we can pull our chilled spread out of the fridge. But before we start filling this in, I like to put a small dot of cheese underneath each corner of the parchment, which will keep it from sliding around as we work. So I went ahead and did that to all four corners. And then using a teaspoon and a finger, or two teaspoons, we can start filling in between the lines. And as we do this, we have to keep in mind that we are going to wrap this in prosciutto, so we don't really have to worry at this point about getting things perfectly shaped. What we should really be concentrating on is trying to stay within the lines. And also, and just as importantly, we only want to build the cheese up to the same height or thickness of the finger or the hand or the wrist or whatever part we're working on, which should not be too challenging since you have a great model in the kitchen with you. Well, actually, you probably have two of them. So when in doubt, stop and look at your finger or your hand or your wrist and try to portion that cheese up to about the same height, or I guess slightly under, since like I said, we're gonna wrap this. And then once we feel like we have the right amount everywhere, we can go ahead and do some fine tuning, right? Maybe smoothing out some rough spots or maybe adding a little bit of detail. Although I'm not sure why I'm wasting too much time doing that. Since once we cover this with the flesh, we're probably not gonna be able to notice that stuff but anyway, I couldn't help myself. And then what we'll do once we've completed the shaping is go ahead and cover this in plastic and then pop it in the freezer for about an hour so it's nice and cold and firm to work with. Since unlike most of the horrible hands out there, we are not gonna drape, we are gonna wrap, which I find so much faster and easier. And to do that, once this comes out of the freezer, we're gonna need to amputate the fingers as well as the hand from the wrist. And we are not gonna be able to do this if the cheese is soft. But if you do pop it in the freezer like we did, we will be able to sever off those body parts nice and cleanly. And besides that, they're going to be much easier to work with as we wrap them with our thin slices of prosciutto, which is the next step. So we'll go ahead and take one thin piece for each finger, and we'll go ahead and wrap that up, ending up with any seams on the bottom. And again, don't worry about perfection at this point. Okay, once we assemble this all back together on the board, we can do some final shaping, and add a few more pieces of flesh as needed. And how this kind of thing is usually done is people will make the shape right on the board they're gonna serve, and then they'll try to drape over the meat and sort of tuck it underneath, which I think is way messier and way harder and takes way more time than this divide and conquer method. Plus this is called a horrible hand after all, so that we get to see it with all the fingers amputated at this point, 
I think fits better into the whole theme. Oh, and by the way, what Irish movie does this remind you of? Anyway, once our fingers have been wrapped and our hand and wrist have been covered, we will cover this and pop it back in the freezer for another hour or so, so that once again it's nice and cold and firm to work with, before we move on to final assembly, which is going to happen right on the board we're going to serve it. And what we'll do after unwrapping is transfer that hand portion on first, yes, palm side down, and then once we're happy with how that's positioned, we can start attaching those fingers, sort of tucking them up under that skin coming off the top of the back of the hand, and after placing on the pinky finger, and then arranging the ring finger, I skip to the thumb, since once we have that into the proper position, I think the middle and index finger will be easier to place, and space. And again, feel free to stop anytime you need, and look at your hand for reference. In case you forget what order the fingers go, or how they should be positioned. But keep in mind, this is called a horrible hand, not a handsome hand. So a few imperfections here and there might make this even more perfect. And that's it. Once the hand's been fingered, we can attach the wrist, at which point we can take some extra pieces of prosciutto, and we can place those wherever we think they're needed. And as far as a tool for fine-tuning, I find that a small paring knife does a great job. And besides covering any of the spots we think need more flesh, and of course covering up the seams between the sections, we can also take some extra strips and add some details like tendons on the back of the hand. Oh yeah, it's been a while since I cut off someone's hand and skinned it, but I do remember some tendons. And for your average party goer, I think this would look fine if we didn't do this extra detail. So exactly how much time and effort you put into this is going to be up to you. I mean, you are after all the Russell Crowe of how far you should go. Which reminds me, you don't have to do a hand. Right, you could use this exact same technique and do a foot. In which case you would be the Russell Crowes of whether you should eat toes. But having said that, I think the hand's going to be a little more interesting and probably easier to trace. But either way, like I said, we will add flesh until we're happy with how it looks. And by happy, of course, I mean horrified. Oh, and I do recommend doing this ahead of time so that your horrible hand has plenty of time to chill in the fridge. Okay, I just think the taste and texture are going to be better that way. And I'll go into more detail about that in a minute, since I did not re-chill mine before serving. Nope, I just went ahead and placed some of my famous Black Magic Sesame Seed Crackers on the board, along with a little bowl of Green Goblin Eyeballs, or if those are out of season, use olives, and then we'll plunge a dagger right into the back of the hand, except I don't have a dagger, so I used a cheese knife. But I forgot the blood, so I pulled the knife out and applied some to the cut, Oh, and pro tip, keep your blood in a hot sauce bottle in case the police come by to search your property. And that's it. Our horrible hand ham and cheese board is ready to enjoy. So let me go ahead and pull out the knife and cut off a piece. And I decided to start with the thumb, since it's the meatiest of all the digits. And as you probably know, the ability to make fake thumbs out of cheese and ham is what separates us from all the other animals. But anyway, that, my friends, was some delicious thumb. I mean, really good, as in two thumbs up. And again, I'm pairing this with my famous Black Magic Black Sesame Seed Crackers, also known as the most delicious, most addictive homemade cracker ever invented, which I'll show you how to make in an upcoming video. Oh, and as I work my way through these fingers, let me go back to something I mentioned earlier. For best results, you should make this ahead of time so that this is thoroughly chilled and nice and firm when you serve it. If you serve this relatively warm and soft like I did, and use a really, really dull knife, all right, this cheese spreader has no edge. And if you put those two things together, you end up making this much harder to serve than it needs to be. So make this ahead if you can, and also possibly use an actual knife, or dagger if you have one, which I've heard you do. And believe me, your guests will appreciate it. And I know, not everybody's into these horror-themed Halloween foods, right? They consider them silly and unnecessarily contrived. But you know what? I don't. So to all the haters out there, let me finish up this video by saying, talk to the ham. And to everybody else, I'll say, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.